So coming up next, we have uh, Tom Trowbridge of Fluence Labs, who is going to give a, a talk a bit about what Fluence is doing. And uh, what's super interesting about Fluence is that it's really kind of, they're, they're trying to tap into the decentralized computing uh, uh, use case of the Filecoin. This is kind of like the last sort of, you know, the, the final stage in the Filecoin roadmap, if you've seen kind of Juan's kind of three-stage Filecoin master plan, which is the first stage is building world's largest storage network, which we've done, or decentralized storage network, which we've done. Step two is onboarding the world's data, and we're in the process of doing that. We've got about 700 petabytes worth of data on the Filecoin network now. And then the final stage is, is bringing computational abilities, um, uh, computer over data functionality to that, to the, to that data. So, um, so that's one of the things that Tom's been working on. I hope I described that accurately. <laughs> so, um, so that's, that, that's where, um, you know, when we say that storage is just the start, um, you know, the, the FVM, the launch of the FVM is so exciting because it enables kind of precisely some of the things that Tom's gonna be talking about here. Uh, really bringing, it's not just storing the data, but it's, being, it's bringing computational abilities to that data. Um, so I think, with that, I'd like to just welcome Tom to the stage. And I think you should be good to go on the podium here. Um, did you have, you had, you had slides, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I think they should be queued up. You can go ahead and use the mic on there. Quick, quicker. Fantastic. Or if you prefer the handheld, you could use the handheld, I guess. But um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That was a terrific introduction. It's probably one of the most... Um, accurate and thorough introductions I've had. So thank you for knowing about Fluence and what we do. This is the ecosystem that would do that. So Fluence is a decentralized serverless compute protocol. And um, there's a terrific um, integration and relationship with Protocol Labs and with Filecoin. Protocol Labs has been a longtime um, backer of us, an investor of ours, and we're close with the um, Filecoin Foundation and the entire ecosystem here. So we're happy to be here and look forward to um, a lot more collaboration going forward. So first, I wanna talk about what is Fluence and we have to back up here. So decentralized serverless compute network or platform. And first we gotta get some definitions right. What does decentralized mean? And decentralized in different contexts and from different, who's ever talking about it will come up with slightly different um, attributes to what constitutes decentralized. So we think there are three attributes which are necessary to be truly decentralized. You have to be verifiable, and that allows you to be trustless. You also have to be unstoppable, i.e. censorship resistant, and you need to be fault tolerant. And to be clear, you can be fault tolerant, but still um, be, non, be, be censorable. So, and you can also be censorable um, and also be fault tolerant. So you need to have all three of those and they are not the same thing if you think about it more carefully. And then what's a compute platform? It's effectively a cloud. It's a serverless, it's a cloud stack that allows the um, decentralized applications, allows you to build them from scratch easily. So that is what Fluence is and some kind of key components to our definition. And so what's some more detail behind that? Because that's a little bit high level. And why are we doing this? And the objective here, what we're trying to build, is the ability to run arbitrary code without limitations with the same kind of speed and performance as the cloud. All right, and that doesn't really exist in a decentralized way right now. And that means we want it to run anywhere on the edge, on your desktop, in the browser, no consensus required, high performance, and to be fault tolerant, secure, asynchronous, and obviously inputs from IPFS, Filecoin, L1s, L2s, et cetera. So these are, this is what we've built, and this crowd will understand this very well, but I still put this slide here in a different format specifically to call attention to it. When people think compute in this ecosystem, they automatically think um, L layer ones, and they think smart contract. And smart contracts are decentralized compute, but they suffer from a number of constraints. Deterministic, redundant, and they're constrained and expensive, right? And so if you think back to what decentralized applications started as, the first decentralized application scale that I'm familiar with is Napster, right? Napster far predated blockchain. So decentralization predated Bitcoin and this whole blockchain ecosystem. And like Filecoin, which is, you know, data is stored off chain, but the chain is used to validate, verify, compensate. That is what Fluence is doing for compute because 99.9% .9 of the web 
is not suitable for on-chain computation, right? And so most of the web, you need to be able to run any computation and be permissionless, and also you gotta be cheap and fast. And that doesn't work with blockchain compute. So we're trying to basically, we have built a general purpose decentralized compute. That is the, what we've been doing, and why are we going through the headache to do that? Why bother? Because it's cheaper, it's, you, you're also free from cloud lock-in, which leads to a number of attributes. You're also censorship and deplatforming resistant, and it really accelerates innovation, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But when anyone can contribute and build on any other platform and any other program, you have a lot of innovation potential. And so first, price, why is it cheaper? I think everyone here understands that when you have a decentralized marketplace, price goes down. And you know everyone here knows that Filecoin storage is around one to 5% of what Amazon S3 is, right? So we don't have to debate the benefits of a decentralized marketplace here. Um, Filecoin has proven this from a storage perspective. We're working on it from a compute perspective. Cloud lock-in, you know, the dominant position allows pricing power. When you can change your cloud provider, your compute provider with no barriers and no cost, they have no pricing power. So pricing falls. And that is, that is what we have, that is the key piece here to reduce, reduce price and also drive innovation. Because if you can't lock people in, then you need to have, offer other services and you need to be open and it leads to other kind of positive externalities. Centralized cloud has a real risk of deplatforming. Everyone knows about Parler being deplatformed. I don't think people here's live have been massively disrupted by Parler's deplatforming, but it shows the power of what these cloud companies can do and what their 58 page terms of service are capable of, of doing. But with decentralized compute network, there's no API to shut off and there's no company to target and no deplatforming possible. And that's very important because Web3 is still on the cloud. And this is a kind of hidden little secret we don't like to talk about, but Web3 still exists on Amazon and AWS. And we've built all these awesome tools, but the wrong regulator comes along, the wrong government pushes Amazon, the wrong um, you know, incident happens, and we are at tremendous risk of this in ecosystem being deplatformed. Right, so that is why we need decentralized, general-purpose compute. Um, you also have centralized backends where people said, you know, we don't want to be on Amazon, so instead they run servers in-house. That is, that brings you don't run deep platforming risk, but you run a whole host of other centralization risks, which is also something we in this ecosystem are trying to prevent. Um, so with that, um, you know, the other, other point here is that um, centralized compute prevents collaboration. And this is kind of the, not, we've talked about the negative things, but this is the upside of decentralized compute, where when you, you have, we, some people here probably remember when you could build on Facebook and you could build on Twitter and you had applications that existed on top of these ecosystems and that led to innovation. And with, web th with a decentralized compute network and with applications that exist outside of ownership, you have no APIs to cut off and applications exist in a decentralized manner that allows developers to build on top of them securely knowing they cannot be cut off. And as long as one host wants to serve that application, it exists. And so it cannot be cut off. So that we think will be a huge innovation driver where anyone can build on any application that's hosted in a decentralized compute manner. And so because of those reasons, we think we are going to a decentralized serverless compute um, platform. And that is effectively the third step in the evolution of compute, which started off with mainframes, internally hosted, moved over you know, two decades, three decades, to centralized cloud platforms, but that ultimately decentralized serverless compute platforms are the next and potentially final stage of compute because they will be cheaper, they will be um, more resilient, and will offer attributes that the cloud can't compete with. But why, is, why does it exist now? If this is so obvious and so good and has so many benefits, why don't we have this? And the answer is, it's hard. And you generally have a sort of a version of the trilemma 
um, with decentralized compute, where you can be verifiable, but it's hard to be scalable. And you can have generalized compute capacity, but you can't be verifiable, right? And so getting all three of these things solved is very, very hard. And so if you look at blockchain, verifiable for sure, but scalability in terms of speed, not really there. And you can have generalized compute capacity like anyone in, in the cloud, for example, but it's not verifiable. So decentralization requires these three things, and that's what Fluence has been working on. And so we have verifiability through a variety of options we can talk about. And the real important thing here is that our competition isn't other platforms. It's not layer ones. It's not blockchains. It's not smart contracts. It's AWS. And AWS and Azure and Google Cloud are you know, the massive world here that we all want to compete against, and that's what we're, we're working on. So what does Fluence exist of? There's two, we divide into two pieces, a developer platform and then a compute marketplace. And so developer platform, quite quickly, we've rebuilt effectively a decentralized um, stack. And this, each of these components, there's a Lambda component, which is Marine, and then like a REST, which is Aqua, which is effectively the orchestration layer. And then we have Fluent CLI, and then data subnets, which basically allow the um, deals to happen to, where, where compute is arranged. So that is the difficult part here. If it was just a marketplace where I go find someone offering me compute capacity and I make a deal with them, that's one level of solution. Creating a software stack that allows you to mimic the cloud in a decentralized manner, that is the next level of complexity, and that's what we've been working on since um, 2017. Compute marketplace, I think everybody here understands this, but this is, and this is actually an um, important piece because this is where the Filecoin ecosystem comes into play and where we hope to be very tightly integrated with the Filecoin. And um, you know, we want, a, you know, obviously, a marketplace of compute providers. And what are compute providers? Well, there are a lot of them right here because they're Filecoin miners who right now are storing data but have unused compute capacity that was, originally, that was used initially for sealing and that compute capacity sits idle. And so we think that um, Fluence will be a new revenue stream for Filecoin miners, first to prove compute capacity, which I'll talk about, and then to actually use and serve that compute capacity um, to date and, and basically compute on the data that is stored by, these miner, by the miners. And so this, we also think that in the Filecoin ecosystem, computing over the data unlocks a tremendous amount of value. And listen, we're not the only ones talking about you know, compute on data. A lot of other people in this ecosystem are attacking this in different ways. Um, but overall, this is an important, I think there'll be ultimately several solutions which are useful depending on what your particular use case is. But we all agree that computing on top of the data unlocks value and there's also excess compute capacity within the Filecoin ecosystem, which can be incredibly productively deployed. We also know that compute demand is going to grow dramatically. We've seen the storage on Filecoin grow significantly. We expect that to continue. I'm sure everyone here expects that to continue. And um, the more data is stored, the more compute is going to be um, required and will add more and more value. So we see that um, continue and we think the monetization of that compute will be a significant revenue stream going forward, especially with Filecoin Plus and the useful data, which I think is effectively taking over the ecosystem. That data will, is there to be, um, for compute to run on top of it, right? And so then the question is, what are you, how is best to do that? And that's where Fluence enters the picture. A um, Couple things here. Um, how are we verifiable? So, you know, proof of Aqua um, execution, so every peer along the way that is in Aqua is the orchestration layer. Every peer that executes code is, there's a verifiable proof along that way. And then for Marine, there is also, um, there's also verification as well, proof of processing. So these are key components to what it is, and I, I think I want to call attention to this because verifiability is a critical piece of this. If you don't have verifiability, you're, I think you're missing a component that is, the market will require. And then frankly, in the last part is proof of capacity. And this is something that we're launching um, end of this year, as you'll see, but this is where Filecoin miners come into play because here, for Filecoin miners to show and prove they have capacity, we will, um, and the protocol will offer rewards. 
So it's a reward-based system the way Filecoin started off offering rewards for initially proving you had storage capacity, and then eventually, and that's obviously evolved to verify deals and proving and being paid for deal, verified deals of real storage on it. We're following that ecosystem bootstrapping model with Fluence, um, hopefully with the help of the ecosystem here. Um, and so we think that storage and compute together create a cloud and create a huge amount of value. And so I think everyone in this ecosystem agrees that compute and storage together are critical. And you know we're excited to be a part of that solution. So where are we? And we've started, this started, I think, 2019. Our testnet's live. The um, execution protocol, Aqua, is live. And we've raised 15 million since we've begun. Q4 is, this is a big year. We've been building for a long time, and this is where a lot comes to play. Our DAO is ready to go. Um, Mainnet, we're targeting for Q4, along with verifiability, and our compute economy. And the compute economy includes this um, proof of compute reward system, which will flow via the DAO. And then we're adding extra languages in 2024. So, um, you know, finally, what's the mission here? And just like Tim Berners-Lee, when he created the hyper hyperlink, he didn't really envision what that would lead to, but he knew that allowing people to connect would lead to unimaginably interesting things, and he did it because he thought it would spur innovation. That's what we think about compute. And when you free compute from clouds, and you make it trustless, and you allow people to build on other applications without risk of being shut off, the innovation that can come from that is hard to really imagine, but we think it is a level of innovation that is not maybe not quite the level of the internet and of um, the hypertext that is the foundation of this whole ecosystem, but it's up there. And so freeing compute from cloud is important, and it's actually our whole mission, I think, in this ecosystem here is to do everything we can to build a decentralized cloud and move away from Google and Amazon, because if we don't, we're gonna be living in a Google Amazon world in perpetuity, and I don't think that's gonna serve us or anyone else very well. So with that, um, hopefully we can all work together to do this. Follow us at, underscore, at Fluence underscore project, and I'm the Tom Tro, um, websites fluence.network. Thank you for your time, and thank you Protocol Labs for the support. Thank you. Great, great. Thanks for that. Oh, quick question. You want to make it quick? Um, here, I'll hand you my mic here. I forgot to say, by the way, you may have seen our name. We're on the Wi-Fi. So that's a very important thing, Fluence Filecoin on the Wi-Fi. That's how close we are. That's how tight we are. Hey, I, I'm just curious how you how you're doing it. Because if you don't have consensus and you have a network of providers. How are you making sure that providers are not tampering with data, not changing the results of the computation, not stealing the data somehow? And like, usually well, on most blockchains, you do it through consensus protocol. Like, what, well, well, what, correct. what so, a secret source? Listen, it's, it's, it's not that secret because it's, it's open source, but it is, um, I guess, a couple points. So one, it's not a blockchain. And that's like the critical foundational premise. It's off chain. That's where the proofs come in and the proofs of execution. And so there's a variety of different proof levels we have depending on which part of the stack we're in. And so there's a ZK for some of it, and then there's a proof of execution for others. And I think that um, I probably would, we're gonna release the details of those in the net, when we launch, when we release our next white paper, which is probably about a month or two months away. So I think I'm gonna have to wait on the exact details on that until we release the white paper because I don't wanna give it away before that, but that is obviously a critical piece of what we've been building. Sounds like perpetual mobile for me. 